a fashionista. The key one I get over. Break it, break it, break it, break it, break Wanaipanya ngumu kufanyo sherati Na kumbuka kabla ni fuge manati Nilikuwa na wakunyo na ile kolonia Versace Squeeze the back seat, iliko love seat My name is Pauline Mushiri My sister here, she's Winfriend Wanjiko Mushiri A.K.A. DJ Wiwa I'm the first born, she's the third born We are four children Our mom and our dad hail from Giriambu, that is in Kirinyaga Winfriend was born with a disability. She was born in the year 1994. I having been born in the year 1987, I saw her from birth. And she was a very beautiful baby, normal baby, for the first one or two months. And then after that, I would hear everyone I met asking me, has your sister's hands started moving and I would wonder why do they need them to move. So being a young girl, I couldn't understand what they meant when they kept asking if her hands were flexible or if they had started moving. But fast forward, as she grew up, I noticed she was different because when other children would say mom, she didn't say mom. When it was time to walk, she didn't walk. When it was time to crawl, she didn't crawl. And questions now became more all around. People I met in the streets would either ask me whether she's walking or talking, how is she, and no one would mention, would ask about me or my mom or my dad. It was always about her. So that's when I realized she was special. But then when she made her first move, she didn't walk. She actually pulled herself on the ground with her butt. That's how she started moving and walking. So we would carry her everywhere because we liked playing with her. She was always a good lookout for our crimes as children. Maybe we were stealing fruits from the neighbor's farms. She was always good as a lookout. So she wouldn't go anywhere. So we would leave her and go steal maybe fruits or toys. We would stash stolen toys into her and carry her. No one would have the courage to search her. Are you crazy? No one would have to. So we actually took advantage of her disability when we were kids. But then it got to a point where our friends wouldn't want, didn't want to play with her. So when we wanted to play with a certain group of kids, they'll be like, leave your sister behind. Just calm yourselves, leave her behind. And it felt odd for me, so I wouldn't. But my younger sister, our, our second born sister, her name is Rachel, she wouldn't leave her behind. And uh, her and her best friend by then was called Rina. They stayed and they were royal friends to Wiwa. So we actually lost most of our childhood friends because of Wiwa, because we couldn't neglect her. But then I remember this one time when uh, Rina and Rachel were going somewhere and they didn't want to go with we were here. So they decided to sneak away from her and go without her. And that was like a magical, it was like a miracle for us. Because from where I was, I saw my sister shoot up. She had been walking with her butt, always pulling her butt on the ground. But this moment, because her friends were going somewhere without her and she was scared of being left out, she actually shot up. She threw her feet in the air and she stood up and she ran. She, never, she had never walked, she never crawled, but she walked and it was a miracle. So that's how my sister was. Growing up, now she now started walking, but then there was this new... There's this challenge that now everyone was noticing about her. She was always drooling all the time. So she always had a beep or her clothes were always wet around her chest. And uh, I didn't 
it didn't seem okay with me but then she was my sister she was mine to love and to hold so it was not a big deal but i could tell the family at large the friends they also didn't want to associate with her because of the drooling and also while growing up fast forward by the time she got to around five all the way to around 13 should have a very bad smell no matter how many times she would take a bath should have this smell that was always hovering around her and that really led to her being discriminated at school at home in the neighborhood everyone would go to church and would sit the four of us no one would want to sit with us and it actually felt bad because no matter how many times we washed her or even perfumed her she would still smell and I had all already forgotten about her, about that, because as she grew into adulthood, into her early 20s, the, the smell faded off. But fast forward, she went to school, a normal school, a primary school, but she was really bullied all through primary school because she went to normal schools where she didn't find, she didn't fit in really well, but she was always top of her class, always top of her class until now we heard of Joytown and that's when she she was enrolled to Joytown uh, primary it's a school for kids who are able differently and um, until I had been to that school I thought my sister was a serious case but when I went to that school and saw the children there so when I realized Things can be south. We are not ours are not our case is not even south. But she made it through the school, performed well, class eight, went to Joy Town Prim uh, High School for her secondary school education. Very top of her class as well. Very good student. She has the interesting bit is uh, she's been a good student. She knows the concept. The problem has been writing. So the way she writes her notes and the way she writes her things down, very few people can actually read. So that has been her, that has worked against her for long because we can tell, those who are close to her know that she knows the answer. I can read the answer. But the fact that she writes with her mouth, she puts the pen in her mouth and writes with it, that makes her handwriting not clear. So most people are not able to read. So she ended up scoring but poorly uh, KCP, uh, KCSE. But then we are still here with her, we love her, and uh, we asked her, what do you want to do now that you have your results, your KCSE results? And she wanted to do tourism. She has a big passion for tourism. Because she was thinking of a career that she can actually do, and it's fun, and she likes to travel, all that. So. She did tourism and um, it was not a good experience because we pay the fee, the tuition, the hostel, the upkeep and all that, but then the school should change her in terms of the certificate and the results. No one was able to put in the effort to know more about her or read her work. So she ended up not performing well or her papers got written off. And so now here we were. Here was my mom. By then, my mom was a single mom. And now she not only had four children to take care of, she also had now Wiwa, who was very discouraged in life. She felt rejected. Her peers were going to the university. Her friends were busy traveling, but she was literally stuck at home. And it was a painful moment. It was a trying moment for, for my mom and Wiwa. And that's when the head of the school called Talanta, and she wanted to go and do DJ. Because all along, Wiwa has loved music. When we had parties back in the day, because we would always have her birthday parties, she would be very jovial and she would dance a lot. Whenever there are these uh, promotional campaigns that come with, with lorries that have music, should always would always go with her and should be dancing so my mom suggested that it's a good idea that she goes to do to pursue dj and so she enrolled but before she enrolled i went to the school looked it up and uh, 
there was a big challenge because the school was somewhere in Thicker Road and the hostels were going to be somewhere in town. So the commuting was going to be an issue, but then the school moved to town. She managed to get a hostel in town and we talked to the caretaker of the hostel and she actually was like a big sister or another mother to my sister during her stay in the hostel and it gave my sister time to be able to pursue her course to the end. While pursuing the course in DJ, the school actually enrolled her because they didn't want to say no. Not because they were like, this one will fit in. No, they didn't want to say no to her at first. They were skeptical about enrolling her. Even the teacher at first was skeptical, but their first encounter with Wiwa and her, the, her intellect was actually visible to the teacher. The teacher realized that if he engages her intellect, she can actually learn something and learn it fast. The same class, there were other students who are, let's say, normal, able, just okay. And they were really having struggle with the class. But the minute we were enrolled to the class and she was, uh, she, was, she was soon surpassing them, they were challenged by her. And so the whole class actually picked up their, themselves and they started working harder to keep up with Wiwa. She finished her, her diploma top of her class as well. She's a role model in the school. She actually is a mentor in the school because they, they had not seen a student come in and pursue the course with so much passion, study it, actualize it until it became part of her. So that's something new that my sister was able to do and she, she's, been, she's been loving music and now she's leaving it and here we are. In terms of getting jobs for her, she's really faced a lot of stigma. We've had uh, people who've looked up her contact on Facebook, or on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and uh, they've given her a job. And uh, when we, we are getting to negotiate about mode of payment, you hear someone telling her, I will pay you by giving you exposure. I'm giving you exposure. And it's hard. How do you give, this is a person with disability, you're giving them exposure. What do you want them to do with the exposure? Eat it? We've had people calling her up and um, when we get to where they are, you see they have like another DJ and we work. So they want to pay the other DJ, but don't want to pay we work. They, they just want to give her not even a stipend that can take care, can help her get home. They want to give her 500 shillings because they want to call it exposure. We're like, she is a qualified person. She's a qualified DJ and she's good at what she does. We've, we, I, I have uh, approached several people who own clubs or are managers to clubs and restaurants and they are very skeptical about hiring her. One, if she doesn't have her own equipment, they don't want her to use their equipment because she's DJing with her feet. They don't want her touching or stepping on their equipment so that it doesn't break. When she says she's coming with her own equipment, then they, they, they think that she's coming with inferior equipment. So she's been stigmatized because of her equipment because she has a shortage of equipment. But then those with equipment don't want to give her access to their equipment as well. They don't want to let her rent them. They don't want to rent them out to her. I don't know why. She's had the stigma where people have, employers have looked at her and seen a, band, a burden. Not someone who can actually improve their lives or change or offer the service they need. They've really discriminated her on her disability. That has been quite hard for us. At times we've had people who are, who are willing to give her jobs and not only give her the job, they, are, they want to underpay her as well, which does not go well with us. I'm here with an appeal to the members of the public and I want to appeal to the innermost desires of your heart. 
I know like those of us who are in Nairobi when you're walking when you're walking around or driving around you see persons with disability and they walk up to you with a cup and they beg from you that was the one thing my mom while she was alive didn't want my sister to do so that's why she pushed so hard to make sure that her child with cerebral palsy gets an education everyone around her told her it is a waste of money and they repeated it time and time again the number of times i have heard it that that money is being wasted why don't you build a house i it got to a point where i also started seeing the other people's point of view because it got to a point where everyone is telling my mom who was a single mom was really struggling to put us through school it got to a point where i started seeing like people were speaking sense but my mom was adamant about it she wanted my sister here to have a way to earn her own living and she didn't want her to end up on the street she didn't want her to be in the street so by taking my sister to dj school she got one person with disability off the street she got one person off the street i do my part as her big sister she lives with me i take care of her do your part instead of when you're thinking of helping someone you want to make a, de a donation to someone this is someone a legit person who is ready to work herself work to wake up in the morning and go to work help her get more jobs she has lost on so many jobs for weddings and events because she does not have powerful speakers she has a small speaker she still needs bigger equipment she's there's um kenyan djs got together and got her deck so she has a very good deck but it needs powerful speakers she needs speakers plus she needs not just speakers she needs several other equipment so we are appealing to the members of the public to reach out to my sister here and help her keep her off the street by keeping her working let's get her a job let's make her employable let's make her the go-to dj for each and every event for weddings birthdays rashios and all others she has a till number and her till number is 59 29 10 1 that is her till number it will go directly to her i have no contact with her i don't touch her money it's hers she also has a line where you can reach to her you can call her she will she might not be able to answer but be patient keep calling her she will eventually be able to answer because she uses her feet to answer the phone so it's normal for her to get a missed call easiest way to reach her by phone is send her a message or a whatsapp and here is her number 0701623843 her safaricom line is registered under winfred wajiko moshiri she's my small sister who i'm proud of and she really inspires me she's a woman of her own hands and means she really likes taking care of herself she really fears being a burden to us her siblings now with our mom having died last year but one but before mom died she still was a hard-working young girl i remember they used to hawk clothes with my mom and it was so interesting because she would be my mom's sales girl and she would carry clothes in a bag and she would go and sell to her friends and people she would meet, she would sell clothes to them, she would hawk to them. And it didn't stop there. She also hawks sweets and earrings, very nice earrings she sells. And uh, she wants to keep herself involved in, in something that can give her a paycheck. Her, her mantra has been, a paycheck is a paycheck. So what she's out is chasing the next paycheck for each month. So when she doesn't have a gig, either online 
or doing events and events, you'll find her walking around with a tiny black bag that she sells sweets from or earrings from and uh, that has helped her to stay sane, to stay, to be occupied and off evil thoughts and uh, to be able to fight the stigma that has surrounded her, that she's supposed to depend on people. Actually, when Corona came, she had actually saved quite a lot and uh, it came at a time where my husband lost his job. I was going through a tough financial time, the business we had had collapsed and she came through for me. I remember her waking up one morning and I was very down but I couldn't borrow her, I couldn't borrow money from her because she's my dependent and she just sent me 5,000 and tells me I know things are tough in Nairobi but take care of yourself and your family and that was one moment that really it felt like an, a kiss from the angels it was God saying it was God sent for me it was big so she is a hard worker and she likes keeping herself involved if it's not hawking or DJing she also designs clothes for people for her friends and uh, sells to them at a profit she she does branding for t-shirts and capes and sells them at a small profit which helps her take care of her hair or take care of her small bills here and there.